hey welcome back to the lecture so in the previous lecture you actually implemented the can in it isn't it so now let's uh, compile this let's see whether it builds or not all right so there are no errors so it builds successfully and now let's implement can tx so once you initialize let's transmit okay so for that let me in let me implement a function can tx okay can one tx so let me give the prototype of this maybe here great so now let's implement that uh, somewhere here okay so now we have to transmit a message now now before that let's explore the can controllers transmission path so how exactly the transmission happens so let's understand that for that let's visit the reference manual all right so in the reference manual so here just click on tx mailboxes and here you can see that three transmit mailboxes are provided to the software for setting up messages the transmission scheduler decides which mailbox has to be transmitted first now in order to understand they have given one nice diagram here a state machine so let's uh, go through that so here it is transmit mailbox state so this is very important to understand so let me explain this to you now first let's go to our ppt and let's explore uh, some of the points here so basically uh, three transmit uh, mailboxes are provided okay so that you know uh, the transmitter scheduler decides which mailbox has to transmit it first okay now in order to transmit a message the application must select one empty transmit mailbox okay and then it has to set up the identifier the data length code and the data before requesting the transmission okay so we'll see that how we can do that i mean you have data structure for that so you have to fill up that and then request the transmission by setting the transmission request bit in the control register in the can control register now immediately after the txrq bit has been set the mailbox enters pending state and waits to become the highest priority mailbox so the moment you request transmission on a mailbox it will not transmit okay so it will send that mailbox to pending state so where the mailbox will wait until it becomes the highest one highest priority one now let's move forward now as soon as the mailbox has the highest priority it will be scheduled for transmission the transmission of the message of the scheduled mailbox will start when the can bus becomes idle so obviously so controller has to wait until bus becomes idle so can controller must see 11 recessive states on the bus in order to conclude as bus is idle so this actually happens because of the end of frame the ifs uh, section of the can protocol all are recessive right great now once the mailbox has been successfully transmitted it will become empty again that's true now the hardware indicates a successful transmission by setting the request complete and tx ok bits in the can transmit status register okay tsr now if the transmission fails the cause is indicated by the alst bit alst means arbitration lost okay in the status register in case of arbitration loss and or the terr bit terr means transmission error bit in the case of transmission error detection so these are some of the points I want to uh, mention in the TX path and when you do the programming you will understand more now based on this well, let's explore this uh, state machine so which is very important now let's assume that you have chosen the first mailbox in order to send a message now the mailbox will be empty initially so you have to fill it up so to fill that you have cube uh, stm32 cube apis I will show you that later now once you do that then you have to set the txr qubit okay that means you have to trigger the transmission so when you trigger the transmission that mailbox will be put into pending state 
and when the mailbox is in pending state you can even abort that transmission by setting abr qubit in the control register so once you abort the transmission it will become empty again so it will not be transmitted now if you don't abort it so then what happens that mailbox will be checked by the transmission scheduler to see whether it's the highest priority one okay so it actually checks the uh, identifier value with other mailboxes okay if they are waiting otherwise if there is only one mailbox then that will be the highest obviously right so that's why that will be scheduled to the transmission okay so that's that's how the mailbox enters the scheduled state okay from pending state now in the scheduled state also you can abort the transmission if you set a b r qubit so then uh, you know the mailbox will become empty so transmission will be aborted now if you don't abort it then what happens the controller will wait until the bus becomes idle so now when the bus becomes idle that mailbox will be scheduled to transmit that enters actually transmit state now in the transmit state it has to participate in the arbitration right so if there are more nodes are competing at the same time then the controller has to compete to claim the bus right so if everything is fine then transmit will be succeeded and mailbox becomes empty again so you will get an interrupt saying the mailbox has successfully sent the message now if arbitration lost or if there is any error then it is considered as transmit failed if the transmission is failed then the mailbox will be moved back to the scheduled state once again only if nart bit is reset nart means uh, automatic read transmission so if the automatic read transmission bit in the control register is zero then that mailbox will not be emptied out but it will be sent back to the scheduling state okay so it will be retried again okay so that's what you are doing here so automatic retransmission so you have enabled it so that means you know transmission will be retried once again so if the transmission fails now if the nart is set then after the arbitration loss or after any error like not receiving an ACK then the mailbox will be emptied out so if nart bit is set okay so we will not be using this path so we will always retry if message transmission fails and remember that so when the mailbox is in scheduled state if you move any other mailbox to pending state then if that mailbox is of higher priority then the transmission scheduler will remove that uh, lower priority mailbox which is waiting in the scheduled state and it can even put into the pending state that may happen okay so that's why the mailbox uh, which does not have highest priority can be moved back to the uh, pending state if a higher priority uh, mailbox is waiting in the pending state okay so that may happen right so i hope you got this uh, straight machines which are involved in a uh, transmission path and now let's go back to our code and let's continue with coding our can tx function okay so i'll see you in the next lecture